All right, turning now to the rising tensions between Ukraine and Russia and really along that border. This just coming in that we've been showing. Take a look at the video. Moscow continuing to display its military might, dis deploying six warships. This to the Black Sea this morning. The question is, is it just a show of force or an act of aggression? Joining us now to discuss that very topic is Newsmax senior national security analyst and former U.S. ambassador to Germany, Rick Grinnell. Uh, Rick, good to see you. Your thoughts on this, is this simply a show of force from Putin or is there cause for concern at this time? Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Sean. Uh, you know, I, I think that this is a cause for concern, but I don't understand why we're not sanctioning the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Um, we should be doing it immediately. <clears throat> Remember that the Democrats, the Biden administration and the German government came together to get rid of the sanctions and to say that this pipeline should go forward. That only encouraged uh, Putin. And what we saw during the Obama-Biden years when uh, Putin grabbed Crimea seems to be playing out now. I don't understand why we're shoving peaceful diplomacy to the side. Where's Anthony Blinken? Uh, he, sh he and Wendy Sherman should be pushing for diplomacy. Instead, B Joe Biden is back to the same old Washington game of sending in U.S. troops and making, uh, the, you know, the Department of Defense as the only option. I, 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 you know, it's perplexing to me. It's frustrating to see Joe Biden say, we're only going to do something against the pipeline if there's a war. And so what are you messaging when you say that? You're, you're messaging that diplomacy is dead and Anthony Blinken doesn't know what he's doing. You mentioned some, something very important and something really that came up in the briefing between the new German chancellor and President Biden is that um, how could you stop the pipeline? <clears throat> um, how can you get this done? The, the president really didn't have an answer. He just says, we'll get it done. The reporter actually pressed and said, well, that's really under the authority of Germany. So here's the chancellor right here, Schultz, but he skirts around the issue. He doesn't announce any, um, let's say, unity with President Biden on this front in terms of Nord Stream 2. I'm not an expert on many things, but I am an expert on what the Germans say and what the Germans do as two different things. <laughs> Let me just uh, be very clear. The German government, Chancellor Merkel, looked at me and promised two terminals, two liquid natural gas terminals that would help bring in gas from America where U.S. LNG would come into Germany. As soon as Trump was gone, uh, the German government canceled those two terminals. Uh, there's no other uh, way to describe this other than they lied to us and they tried to um, push us off from sanctions or pushing hard on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline by promising future terminals of U.S. LNG and others, not just U.S., but mm -hmm. other uh, LNG from, from other countries. Wow. And so now what we see is the Germans are saying, you know, trust us again. If the Russians invade, if there's a war, then we'll really do something. I don't trust them. That's an excellent point that you bring up, and clearly first-hand knowledge that you have there is, is, is so key. Um, I, I question, then, how important Germany's role really is this in deterring uh, Russia and a possible invasion of Ukraine. They're, they're incredibly important. But the Germans for four years have been undercutting the European Union. And by the way, the European Union members know this. They don't trust the Germans. Only in America and only in the Biden administration do we believe that somehow that the Germans are being a good member of the EU and leading the EU. The rest of the EU doesn't think that. The rest of the EU doesn't understand why the Germans are ignoring the European Parliament when the European Parliament said, don't go for Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Look, the, the reality is the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is not online. For four years, they've been telling us that pipeline is, you know, two weeks away, a month away, six months away. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give away any intelligence. I was director of national intelligence. But the reality is, is it's not online. There is still time to sanction the heck out of it and stop this uh, influence into Europe, and the Germans are not going to help us. They, they have put themselves in 
the position where they need a second Russian pipeline. I'll just finish with this. We believe diversification of your energy supply is a good thing, whether it's for America or the Europeans. That is the U.S. position. It's also the European position. We think Nord Stream 1 is a part of that for Europe. So some Russian gas should be a part of the equation. But Nord Stream 2 goes too far. We've been very clear. It was a B Obama administration position. No to the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. We've just had too many weak politicians in Washington not stand up to the Germans and support the rest of Europe and say, don't do this. Final question for you, and then I'll close on this, Rick, if I can. Um, it, it really is just, it boils down to this one question of will Russia invade Ukraine? And it's something that every, every reporter asks every single day. Um, and you, you really just can only follow the facts. And so here's what we know. We know that 130,000 troops, something like that, is surrounded, Russian troops surrounding Ukraine's border in, in, in a variety of areas. We know we're sending over uh, troops as well from the states. Um, we know that warships have gathered there, as we just reported, uh, Russian warships. Um, I'm curious to know what's next. We talk about diplomacy, but how does America itself show strength uh, towards Russia? Today, we should sanction the pipeline and avoid war and, and do crippling diplomatic sanctions. We, we are in this dilemma in Washington, D.C., where we push aside the State Department. We don't have diplomacy with muscle. When we have diplomats who do have muscle, uh, they're somehow mocked as being undiplomatic. And I think there needs to be a transformation of the State Department. We need diplomats on the front line avoiding war, using every tool of the U.S. government outside of war to get uh, to the better decision. And uh, we just haven't done that. We've shoved aside the State Department. We have a Foreign Service officer crop of people who don't know how to negotiate, who don't know how to creatively negotiate, led by Wendy Sherman right now, who, uh, you know, what do you want? Wendy is her nickname. She's literally given away everything in North Korea, Iran, Russia. She's failed in every negotiation. And yet she is the Deputy Secretary of State and she continues to lead diplomacy. Washington, D.C. needs to wake up and stop rushing to war and start letting our diplomats do their job. Let's celebrate diplomacy with muscle. Rick Grinnell joining us live. Rick, it is always a pleasure to pick your brain on these uh, topics. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Sean.